One of the joys of the post-election environment in Washington is you get to learn about things like the fiscal cliff and sequester, not a word I thought any of us would ever be using in polite conversation. <laughs> this week in Washington, it was the only thing everybody talked about, and mostly in the context of, oh, I guess there's going to be a sequester. And you think there is going to be one now, right? That's right. The sequester is the process for picking the new pope. Is that what we're talking <laughs> about? <Yeah. laughs> exactly. No, it's funny. The last, these budget crises we've had the last few years, we've always gotten a week out thinking something bad was going to happen, and then all this, there's this flurry of activity, and the, they get a Hail Mary pass at the last minute. This time, there's really no flurry of activity. Yeah. Everyone sort of knows we're going to go blitzing into March into this kind of uncertain, murky, cloudy situation. And so it looks like there's going to be uh, at least a sequester temporarily. You know, there's going to be this process beginning of March, a blizzard of, of letters are going to go out from the federal agencies saying, you know, telling contractors and employees, we're going to have to cut our spending. It's going to, you know, mean... Um, less furloughs for employees, all sorts of other cutbacks as well. You know, the, we're not going to get hit, you know, by this immediate um, assault on March 1st, but it's going to eventually start to tighten the grip of government spending. And as long as this process goes on, maybe, we, you know, we might start to see some All right, effects. so you get the task of giving the 30-second explanation of what sequester is and why we're having it. <laughs> uh, the Congress of the United States and the President of the United States decided to create something that was so bad that as an alternative, they would do something about the deficit. They didn't do something about the deficit, so now they're actually asking the government to implement something that was designed to be unworkable. Uh, for the affected agencies, account by account, there's 1,200 accounts in the federal government, they're supposed to take 8% off of what they were otherwise going to spend in defense, 5% is it, on, on domestic spending. Starting on March 1st. Starting on March 1st. But they, they're, I think the biggest consequence of this is they're wasting a lot of time figuring out how to do this. It won't happen all on the first day. As Damien has reported, they apparently have to give notices to federal workers before they're furloughed. So we're going to have a lot of uncertainty and all these notices, but no one will actually lose a day's pay until probably the end of March. So there's going to be a lot of maneuvering, and I think the, the, it's a sad sign that the only optimistic view, if you're an optimist, you believe, that somehow in March, before they actually start laying off workers, furloughing workers. After having threatened to furlough right, workers. Right, and getting everybody all upset and wasting a lot of newsprint, not to mention the people in the agencies who are trying to figure out how to make this all work, they'll find some half-baked face-saving compromise that will allow the sequester to go away before it really bites, and we'll find a way to continue the funding of the government, which expires on March 26. You know, Siobhan, it's, it's really hard to get people to feel sympathetic for federal employees. I, I recognize that. But, I mean, this is, must be a terrible, I mean, we all deal with people who work in the government. This has got to be a terrible way to try to go about doing your job. For, for the federal employees? For federal employees. Like well, you're, sure. you're running an agency. What are you supposed to do? Well, sure. And I mean, especially if you're talking about folks who are responsible for national security, who would be the folks who I'm speaking yeah. with, because, you know, they're already in a very day in, day out, constant job. This isn't something where it's really easy to just take off 8% here and there and everywhere. I mean, you know, if you've got a spy operation going and, you know, I think military is protecting operations, but there are a lot of other things that are now going to be like cut civilian back. civilian maintenance workers. Yeah, yeah. So the things that are supposed to facilitate all the operations do get cut back and so to think that that's not ultimately going to have a consequence is is really fantastical yeah. yeah well my prediction is that we'll have a sequester it'll go for a while but not very long and then we'll do something more sensible it, well, you, it, know, you in agreement do with something Mike? else more sensible well, <laughs> what's really <laughs> weird <laughs> 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 almost anything will qualify what's really weird about this is so they're the cuts that they're doing are actually in this kind of small portion of the federal budget right they're not cutting Medicare benefits they're not cutting Social Security benefits so if they're going to cut things you know if we're going to be furloughing TSA workers and um, meat inspectors, like the White House says they're going to do, then and there could be the consequences of that. There could be this public backlash. Well, we can't do that, and then they're just going to rescramble the whole debate about can we do government spending, even if it's just this little. Well, bit. and there, there are two possible uh, outcomes to that. One is the Republicans will win because people will see government services shut down and say, oh, well, that's not so exactly. bad, and the, so the consequences aren't terrible. They think, oh, that's okay, or. Everything's horrible, and the idea that you know you really ought to pay for this stuff becomes more prominent in people's well, minds. Well, the White House seems to think this is a political winner for them. Yeah. Do you think they're right? I don't think anybody really knows. Right now, it, it probably is um, because people are scared. If I'm just saying, if the reality is not as scary as the scary stories tell you, then maybe people will shrug their shoulders and say, "Well, maybe we can cover cut government spending." I I think it's a, I think it's a grenade. I don't think how how it explodes. I don't think anybody knows.